Hi Ninja! In today's video, we are finally going to talk about one of the most requested videos in this channel, which is the Versant examination or test. So if this is what you have been waiting for, then keep on watching. Now, if you're not familiar with Versant just yet, it is an automated language test that is administered during training, recruitment, or application. It has been used by the BPO or call center industry for such a long time to test the applicant's communication skills. It usually lasts for 15 minutes and it measures the core language aspects which include comprehension, vocabulary, and pronunciation. The Versant test has six parts from parts A to F and so in this video we're going to talk more about parts A, B, and C and in the next video we're going to talk about D, E, and F so that we'll be able to completely discuss what you need to know about the Versant examination. There are so many aspects or things that you need to remember in this examination. So I took the liberty to take down notes of everything that I have learned and share it with you. So for the first part or part A, it is reading. And this part of the test uh, measures your pronunciation. It has to be loud and clear and also your intonation it has to sound um, conversational, not stiff and too strict, but natural and conversational. Usually for BPOs or call centers, when they administer this exam, you will be given a piece of paper with all the sentences that you need to read back. If it is a computer assisted or telephone assisted exam, then the sentences will be flashed on your screen and you have to say it out loud by using your headset. The difficulty level of this is 1 over 5 because you really just need to read the sentences. You will be given a paper with sentences that have numbers. So for example, you will be told to read sentence number 1 and you just have to read sentence number 1. And read sentence number 4 and you just have to read sentence number 4. And that's it. This is basically the first test because it is the easiest and simplest. So it's a good transition to the next few parts of the examination, which can be a little bit more difficult for you. The sentences have relatively simple structure and vocabulary. Usually there are eight items, so there will be one set of four sentences and then another set of four sentences. They are grouped in such a way that each sentence is related to the next in the first set. So from sentence 1 to 4, all of these sentences are usually related or coherent so that you will have an idea of how to read each sentence in such a way that you'll be able to deliver it with proper intonation and in a more conversational or natural manner. Part A. Reading. Please read the sentences as you are instructed. Please read sentence 6. They play loud music all night when she's trying to sleep. Now read sentence 8. He wants to move out of that neighborhood. Okay, let's talk about Versant Part A a little bit more. I mentioned earlier that most of the time it's going to be 8 sentences. Sometimes it's going to be 12 or even more than that. Now, I have a few examples here. This is what I meant earlier by the sentences are grouped into 4. So, for example, there are 8 sentences. The first four are related to each other. They form a story or paragraph. 
Now, this will help you determine how you will read the sentences because you know that one sentence is related to the next. So, for example, Versant will ask you to read the first sentence. Then you can simply say, Larry's next door neighbors are awful. It's like telling a story. It's really just that easy. Now, you have to mind your pronunciation, your clarity, and your volume as well as your intonation in this part. I know that this is very easy, so you can bank on how you say each sentence. So for the first sentence, for example, Larry's next door neighbors are awful. So you have to enunciate each word clearly. And you don't have to shout, just use your normal speaking voice. You don't have to pretend you have an American accent, just use your normal accent. As long as you are understandable, then everything should be okay. The second sentence, they play loud music all night when he is trying to sleep. So the first word is they, it's T-H. Usually, the mistake here is that you don't pronounce the T-H properly so instead of saying they you say they play loud music so it's not proper pronunciation anymore so take note of that if there's th and you can say they on the third sentence if he tells them so same with they sometimes you say if he tells them instead of them so th sound and then another they so they just turn it up louder. And then for the fourth sentence, you say he wants to move out of that, that, instead of that. So don't say he wants to move out of that neighborhood. Again, pronunciation. So he wants to move out of that neighborhood. Sometimes you don't really notice that, but it's important that you are mindful of how you pronounce each sentence. Part B is listen and repeat exactly. This is where your listening skills come in. The difficulty level is two over five because sometimes you don't get to hear the exact sentence right away. So what happens in this part of the test is that Versant will say a sentence and then you'll have to listen and then repeat it exactly. Now this part is used to measure your mastery of the phrase and sentence structure and we also have fluency and pronunciation in this part the length of the sentences will also increase as you go on now one tip here is that if you miss the sentence repeat whatever you have heard even if it's just the last two words so make sure to again repeat it in a conversational manner Basically, you will be given 3 to 15 words in one sentence. Part B. Repeat. Please repeat each sentence that you hear. For example, a voice says, Leave town on the next train. And you say, Leave town on the next train. Somebody told me to speed up. Somebody told me to speed up. Bob and Tom talked all day. Bob and Tom talk all day. These plates and glasses would make a fine present. These plates and glasses will make a final present. Roads through the woods can be scary when there's no light. Roads through woods can be scary when no lights. <laughs> Now for part B, again, you have to repeat the sentence exactly as it was said or verbatim. So for example, here we have get some water. If Versant will say get some water, then just have to repeat it as it is. Get some water. And as much as possible, try to say it the way Versant said it. Like if it's just a statement, then you say get some water. If it's a question, like what is your name, then you can say what is your name. So you have to follow it as well. Then you can say for the second sentence, let's meet again in two weeks. 
This is what I mentioned earlier that each sentence gets longer and longer. So notice the first and then the second and then the third is the longest sentence. So in this case, you really have to listen, focus, and eliminate distraction so that you can repeat the sentences exactly as they were said. Now, if you miss, as I mentioned, if you miss the sentence the first time, then just try your best to say the sentence even if um, it's just the last two words or the last three words, but never ever skip it or never ever pause too long or have dead air during the examination. Part C is answering close-ended questions. If you're not familiar with close-ended questions, these are questions that have definite answers like yes or no, or one-liners, or exact answers. So difficulty level of this is two over five. These are actually just common sense based questions that will be asked from you, and you just have to give one word correct answer. Some of the questions have options, some of the questions don't have options, so you have to be quick when you are answering. This part of the exam measures your ability to identify answers based on context, measures your receptive and productive vocabulary within the context of spoken questions or conversational style. So even if your answer is wrong in this part, it won't usually matter. But do not intentionally answer it incorrectly or make fun of the questions. It's not advisable. Just do so if you really cannot think of an answer because you are put on the spot. As much as possible, please answer the questions correctly. I know that sometimes when we are asked a question, even though we know the answer, we still answered the incorrect answer because our mind is super out there. It's understandable, but then again, once you focus, you'll be able to answer it correctly. This part also gives importance to pronunciation and vocabulary. Also, one thing you need to remember, if you take too long to answer, it will skip to the next question and you miss a point. So it is important that you think quickly. Part C, questions. Now, please just give a simple answer to the questions. For example, a voice says, Would you get water from a bottle or a newspaper? And you say, A bottle. Or, From a bottle. Which is smaller, an alley or an avenue? An alley. Sam plans to compete in the chess tournament. Will he be a participant or a spectator? Participant. If a rock hits a window, which is more likely to break? Window. Are ties commonly worn around the waist or around the neck? Waist. And now for part C, these are the examples of the questions that you need to answer. First, what is frozen water called? So it's ice, right? Unless you have other answers, as what I mentioned, you can make a mistake with your answer, but do not intentionally make a mistake. Just make sure you answer it correctly as much as you can. But then again, do not skip a question. Always answer it. How many months are in a year and a half? So one year is 12 months plus half of the year is six. So that's going to be 18. And then, does a tree usually have more trunks or branches? And obviously, branches. So that's it. That's it for this video for now. This is just part one. So watch out for part two, which will include parts D, E, F of the Versant examination. So if you like this content, don't forget to like, share, subscribe if you haven't yet. I'll see you again on my next video. Take care and bye-bye.